that's my very special guest tonight. Boxing referee, a man of all ages, of all <laughs> colors. Let me tell you something, getting to know you, uh, it's pretty interesting. I was reading the book, I got the book on Wednesday night, that's correct? That's right, that's right. And I said, well, before I do my homework, before I do my interview, I had to sit down and read. Yep. And it's, uh, it was really fascinating to get to know you. you. You're one of the world's top boxing referees, right? Yes, so they tell me. Uh, yeah, you've been involved more than 350 yeah. fights. I mean, that's pretty Ch amazing. Those, that's championship fights. Yes. And you've been around, and it's like, I, I want to see if we can just go back in time and, and from the beginning. Yeah. With your dad, because your family uh, being involved in the circus, right? In the, that's in, right. in the circus yeah. business. That's circus kinda, and variety, yes. Yeah, you don't hear that every single day. You do not hear that every single day. So let's talk about that. Your father, your mom, your brother, the relationship with your brother was very, yeah, exactly. very close. And, and growing up in England, let's talk about that. Yeah, growing up, I, as I said, I, I didn't realize how lucky I was. Um, I was born in 1943, and there was a couple of years left of the war. And at, at three weeks old, um, my father, and mother put me into a foster home because of the war, I suppose. Mm. Um, but my, my mother and father came over to the States to, to work over in the States. And they were busy people, let's put it that yeah, way. Yeah. Really busy. And um, I stayed there until I was seven. I, I thoroughly disliked the place and the people. And I was there with my, with my brother. And I didn't get on with Monty. Him. With Monty, yeah. That's yeah, I didn't name. get on with him. Um, it's different now. Um, after, after about 55 years before I got on with him. Um, but uh, my dad, uh, Monty had an accident, uh, a car accident. He was in hospital for 18 months. And um, my dad had to come back from the States and of course I had to go to the hospital all the time and see him and they decided that uh, when he came out of hospital they were working over in England they were doing the knives dad was a knife thrower the knife thrower that, even to read about it that was like oh my god and he was a good one he was supposed to he was, he good was one. yeah i mean he was uh, when he, he was over Mondays here to rehearse right yeah, that's what right. you wrote in the book. Yeah, yeah. I did my homework. I'm telling yeah. you, Monday's to rehearse. <laughs> he will make sure that he will get it done right. Get all his get all his marks in the yeah, theatre. Get his right. marks right. Yeah, he did it, that's you right. know, like to see people. Well, like, dad was office. Dad was a tough guy. And tough, essentially and tough. Yeah, he was nobody. Nobody. But not surprising in boxing him. to hear with our fighters, right? The relationship, mm. with, you know, with fighters and trainers and referees. I mean, the father figure. It's, it's... Yeah, th that was... was um, Dad never showed emotion um, and never... You never really thought he liked you. <laughs> and the things that he said to me, you know, he sort of said to me, I would never ever make anything of myself in life. And, why and he that's would spurred, say that to you? I was, when I was reading well, I, those I, words, I, why? Because why? I tell you, I, I always put that down to do, you know the song with Johnny Cash? And Which song is it, that? And, I'm not too familiar with Johnny Cash, yeah, but you refresh. My name is Sue. And you know, and he's, he's, he gave his son the name Sue, right? And mm -hmm. the name, he gave him the name Sue to toughen him up. And so he would get through life. And I, I, I associate that with Dad. Maybe, maybe it's wrong, but I, I want to associate that with, uh, with, with Dad. That he told me I would never, ever make anything. And he told me a few times I would never, ever make anything of my life. And I think it was the same sort of thing. Oh, well, I'll, I'll show you whether I can make anything yeah. in my life. And you wanted I did. to prove him wrong. I wanted from, to prove him wrong, age, yeah. You yeah. knew that you have a calling and you said, I'm going to prove you wrong, yeah. Dad. Well, how I'm going to do it, I, have n I did not have any idea. Right. But it was nice when you said it when at 14, right, that you decided that at 14, you decided to get out. Yeah, I left right? home at 14, You yeah. left home, which is a brave move. It was, yeah. Very scary. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was scary, you have to yeah. Figure, you have to make a living, you have yeah. to pay rent. I, so it's I spent three days, my first three nights, I took my a little, a little case I had 
uh, with my belongings in, and I spent three nights in, on a, a place called Woodhouse Moor, which, which is a big moorlands, you know, with a park, you know, and sleeping in the hedge and what have you. And, and got myself um, doing a few bits and pieces, a laundry man, a delivery man, yes. you know, and, and got, got myself some digs. I got a paper round and, and got myself some, uh, some digs, uh, a bed sitter, uh, find your own food and what have you, you know, of course, you know, and, and I just ducked and dived. Right. And, uh, and made something in the end. Right. I wanted to mention before we go on, because time goes really fast and you're going to talk about boxing in your life in the mm. boxing world. I, your grandfather had the, the, the elephant man, my, right? My gra yeah, because my, my real name is Michael Van Norman. That's correct. Michael Van Norman, known as Mickey. Mickey. Mickey, Mickey Van. Van. Yeah. Your manager gave you that name. Yeah. To clarify that. That's right. Yeah. And well, your he said you have Mickey Van, correct? On my passport, it says, yeah, it's yeah. Mickey Van in okay. there as well, professionally known as Mickey Van, mm -hmm. because nobody else knows me as, as anything else. Right. So uh, even my family now call me, you know, they call my wife Mrs. Van. So. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like Mrs. John, Mrs. Uh, Bond, James Bond. Very nice. That's a nice ring to it. Your manager was right. He was right, yeah. He was that's right. right. So the elephant man, who, I mean, so it was the real elephant man. The right? real, yeah. My grandfather was Tom Norman. Um, he died, you know, before I was born, um, and and my my father was one of thirteen, and they were all in on the fairground or or, or show business in some way clowns. Uh -huh. um, I think there were three of them were clowns, um, and Dad wanted to to do the knives. And it's uh, interesting how somebody decides because if you really think about the psychology behind it, you read the words, you see images. You hear sounds, and you kind of like think, why knives? I mean, it's something about you're putting your life yeah. on the line. Is risky? Is is dangerous? It's right? It's not it something. It puts my mum's life on the line. <laughs> I mean, it, that that's pretty pretty scary. Yeah, it is. Dad always wa Dad wanted me to be a knife thrower. Yeah, but you didn't want to. No, I didn't want to, and I used to practice, and my arm would ache, and he got me a, a special... Uh, board, like a special... Uh, no, I used to use his board, but he got me a set of knives made, a set of chivs, and I, and I would practice, and I, I just didn't like it. And, and he got me a, a trampoline. A uh, um, trampoline, a trapeze. A trapeze, yeah. And and I practiced, and I loved the trapeze. Like, oh yeah, but that's kind of scary too. Uh, and and I I worked at it for a, a good a good while, and did a few shows. I have you in the picture. See what the, what the giraffe. Oh, I used to. That was yeah. When we when we were on the fairground. Yes. And um, I used to be the giraffe neck woman. That's, yeah, oh, that's, that's your me. Picture. I wish I can show it. If, if I'm going to show it, it's not, they're going to take too long, but that, that's you. That's me, yeah. It's that's me. It's an illusion, of course. Right, but right. But that's me. And I used to sit there for hours, and, and people would walk into the tent and, oh. and look, and they'd pay, I don't know, threepence or something like that, and, and see me sat there, and, and I'd say it was just an illusion. Right. But it was me. With being so young, you know, I was, uh, I'll be about eight years old, and of course, smooth complexion and what have you. My mum used to do my eyes and my lipstick and all the rest of it and um, the wig. And people were a lot more gullible then. <laughs> <laughs> you created the attention. Back then, back then you knew, okay, the show business, people, the attention, yeah. the love, the flair, the illusion, the hunger. You knew back then that you would be in the entertainment business. I knew Somehow, I was going to do something. Yeah, I was going to do something. Right, so how you make that transition to boxing? Now let's let's get into the boxing now. Right, I I left home. I, I remember my dad was uh, we we lived in Leeds up in Yorkshire, and Dad had, had finished with the circuses and what have you, and. I, I used to have a few arguments with him, of course, you know, because I started boxing as an amateur. Right. And, and he said to me, you know, box, don't, don't do boxing, it's too tough. Uh, do wrestling. Right. And he wanted me to do wrestling. I didn't want to do wrestling. I you know, I, I don't want fight. I don't mind a fight. Um, and I, I, used to, I used to love a fight. I, I wasn't very good. Mm -hmm. But, um, and in the end, 
one day, one, one evening anyway, and, and I'd had enough. And I don't know, and I remember going upstairs into my, I lived in the attic in this house, big house in Leeds, and I put all my stuff into a, into a case, a little brown attached case, and I walked and I crept down, I was frightened to death of my dad. And I crept <gasps> downstairs and I got to the door and my father was up on the stairs and he said, where are you going? So I said, I've had enough dad, I said, I'm going. He said, if you walk out of that door, you'll never come back again. Don't ever come back. Mm -hmm. And I knew he meant it. And I thought, no, I'm going to go. And I went. And I slept say, for three nights under hedges and what have you, in parks and what have you, and got myself a paper round, got myself a job, um, you know, a van boy delivering right. laundry and things like that. Right. Got myself some digs, a uh, bed sitter, and, and I was boxing amateur at the time. Right. And of course, you only get prizes then. So, what I used to do is I, I have a fight. I'll, I'll, told my club, you know, I said, I want to go, you know, I want as many fights as I can, and I'd get up a fight. And I, the trophy I won, I would take it down to, in, to a pub. You know, we have public houses of boozers in, in, in England there. And so a guy called Walt Barra, and he would take my prize on a Friday night and run a raffle. And then we'd split the takings. And he used to, you know, he used to cream the load off. I know that, but <laughs> I wasn't bothered. Right. You know, I was getting my rent and, and, right. you were and a fair, of course. you know, and, and I carried on like that. Right. And then um, I met my first wife and I was still boxing. She, she hated it. Um, but it's a connection between women and men and boxing and wives and the attention. We were talking about that, how you guys get so wrapped up in your own honey that you forget to get the honey right next to you. <laughs> okay, so let's yeah. not get into yeah, that because I, said, I, I was, you know, it's, it, I, I said once again, it's fascinating, but it's, it, boxing sucks you in. And yeah, you know it does. That, Mickey, yeah, it does. It sucks yeah. you in. It's such a powerful sport. It, 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 Sucks your it energy. is the most powerful sport. I mean, uh, you know, you see the fights whenever there's a, the world heavyweight championship, or even other like over here, you have so many big fights in Vegas and Madison, right. in Atlantic City, all over, all Texas. the big fights. Yeah. You know, they're here and they make they they make so much money, so they're bound to 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 be so so important to the individuals right the stakes are very high but still yeah. you cannot lose your humanity mickey no uh um. making you wonder a little bit there because sometimes what happens when you again i don't want to get distracted because i want to get this interview the right track i want to keep my concentration going fighters they get lost in translation like actors get lost in translation sometimes success money fame uh, Everything takes away, and you end up yeah, losing your the, humanity a little bit. But they, yeah. But you, you, you're so focused on the right. on the fight because there's always there's always something there. There's yeah. always you you win your first fight and you want to go on beaten, but then you get beaten. Right. So then you want you want a, a, a rating. You want to oh, I want to get in the top ten of the ranking. Oh, you get there. Right. You know, or you don't get there. So you're still trying. Or you then you want to try for an area, what we call an area title, which is um, a state title over here. Uh huh. Um, and you and you uh, and you keep aiming. There's always something to aim for. You want aim for a British title. You get a British title. Yeah, the so then you want European a European, title. Yeah, yeah, or a Commonwealth. It's always there's the always something there. There's always expectations. Yes. Right. Yes. Now you're making a transition, becoming a referee. Let's talk about that. When you made that transition, you were into boxing, and one day you said, "Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go this way." Uh, yeah. I, well, no, I, I finished as, as a fighter. Right. Um, and I, I, I left the game for uh, uh, two or three years, but I missed it. You know, it's, it still has that draw. What you miss the game? You missed the what? The energy? You, mi you miss the enthusiasm? You miss the people. The you miss the people. Okay. Um, you also miss the crowds as well. You right. know, you miss the, you miss the, the crowds, yeah. Right. And I went to my manager, uh, my old manager, and, and I said to... Uh,